Apollo's Parachute Mission, an aerospace engineering story. Chapter 1. No place like home. Apollo peered into the last cardboard box in his bedroom. Hiding in the shadowed corner was his soccer ball. He bent down to take it out, but stopped, his hand hovering a few inches above it. Once that ball was out of the box, he would be completely unpacked. The move would be final. Hey, Paolo, I'm going to hang out with the neighbors. Paolo's older sister, Julia, called from down the hallway. Have you seen my bag? Relieved for the distraction, Paolo headed toward the rustling he heard in the kitchen. Nope, haven't seen it, Paolo said as he rounded the corner. Julia, he called. The kitchen was empty, Julia. Found it. Julia sprang up from behind a mountain of boxes and held up her bag as proof. Hey, you should come meet everyone. It'll be fun. No, thanks. I think I'll stay here, Paolo said. Suit yourself, Julia said. She walked over to Paolo and squeezed his shoulders. It's gonna be okay, you know. Paolo looked at the floor and nodded. I know. It had been two months since the day Paolo's parents announced the family was moving. He had been eating lunch with Mom, Pop, Julia and his best friend, Andre. The smell of fajota, salty pork, beans, and spices filled the room. Paolo and Andre had been talking about the big soccer game coming up. That was when Pop broke the news that they were moving. Alcantara, Julia had asked. Do people even live there? Of course people live there, Pop had said. It will be a great adventure. You two have almost never been out of this city. You'll get to see a whole new world, plants and animals. And the sky. You'll be amazed at how brilliant the stars look without the lights of the city masking their flow. Paolo had barely heard Pop. How could they leave Brasilia? The big, bustling capital city was the only place Paolo had ever lived. His school. His friends, everything was in Brasilia. But, why? Paolo finally managed to say. Mom had placed her head over Paolo's. Your pap and I have been offered a change to work with the scientists and other engineers at the space launch pad in Alcantara. We'll be on a team designing a craft that will travel into space. It will help scientists make new discoveries. Isn't that exciting? She had asked, squeezing his fingers that afternoon. Now that he was sitting in their new kitchen, he still didn't feel excited. He didn't want to be in this new house, and he didn't want to make any new friends. Why would he need to? He already had Andre, his soccer team, and his friends at school in Brasilia. There was one more reason that Paolo didn't want this change. He hadn't mentioned it to mom or pop. He didn't even like to think about it himself. Paolo was afraid that people in this new town might think he was different. He had been born with one hand that had three fingers instead of five. It hardly affected anything Paolo did, but it didn't look the same as everyone else's hands. In Brasilia, people knew Paolo, and we were comfortable with his hand. They knew that his hand didn't matter, that he was just Paolo. But he couldn't help thinking that people in this new town wouldn't know that. Paolo nudged open the screen door and stepped outside. He still found the quiet yard surrounding their new house strange, so different from the tall buildings and streets that ringed their old apartment building. For the past few nights Paolo had sat outside and gazed up at the sky. At least I still have the stars, he thought. In Brasilia Paolo had loved looking at the stars each night before he fell asleep. Some people used holidays or changes in weather to mark the passing seasons. Paolo used the movement of the stars. He knew that when Leo was framed by his window, school would be starting soon. And when he could see the red of Beetlejuice and the blue of the Rigel with Orion's belt in the middle, he knew summer was just around the corner. When Paolo looked out the window on any given night, everything he could see, from the stars to the moon to the planets, seemed totally still. But as the seasons passed, Paolo could watch the movement of lots of stars and planets in space, just by looking through that window. Now, out here in Alcantara, the stars seemed like familiar friends. Paolo stood and walked around the yard. He spotted a box next to the corner of the house and peered inside. 
gardening tools, a wrench set, and how that get in here. The object he pulled out looked like an old scrap of fabric, but it was much more than that to Paolo. He and Andre had made the parachute to help them send messages to each other at night. They'd lived in the same apartment building, and Paolo's room had been just above Andre's. When they were supposed to be asleep, they used the parachute to send secret messages to each other. Andre would slide his messages into a little container and toss them up for Paolo to catch from his window. Paolo would attach his replies to the parachute and drop them down. Paolo's heart fell as he remembered the old apartment and his friend. He held the parachute up and then let it go, watching it drift slowly down to the ground. No use for this now, Paolo thought. He picked up the parachute again, then noticed someone at the edge of the yard. Paolo stared at the boy. The boy stared back. Neither one spoke. Finally, Paolo broke the silence. Oi, oi. Um, your sister, Julia. She was talking to my sister and she said that you're twelve. I am too. Paolo nodded and raised an eyebrow. The boy continued. She says you like soccer. And I've been looking for someone to practice with. The boy trailed off. Paolo tried not to roll his eyes. He told Julia he didn't want to meet the other kids in the neighborhood. The boy was looking back at Paolo with wide, hopeful eyes. Not sure what else to do, Paolo stuck out his left hand, his five-fingered hand, to introduce himself. Paolo almost always used his left hand to shake hands with new people, even though he knew most people would be expecting his right. I'm Paolo. The boy put out his right hand, then, looking confused, switched to offer his left. He smiled and said, I'm Lucas. Did you make that parachute? Uh, yeah, Paolo said. I made it with a friend of mine. It's neat, Lucas said. What else do you like to do? Do you want to come kick the ball around? I have a goal set up in my backyard. No, Paolo said. The smile disappeared from Lucas's face. Feeling guilty, Paolo quickly added, I still have a lot of unpacking to do. Maybe we could do it tomorrow. Okay, yeah, Lucas said. I'll come by tomorrow. Good luck with the unpacking, he said, then turned and jogged off. Paolo stepped back inside and let the door swing shut. Julia is in big trouble, he thought. Chapter 3 Second Impressions the next day Paolo spent all morning trying to come up with an excuse so he wouldn't have to play soccer with Lucas. More unpacking to do? Didn't feel well? Tired? Those excuses will work for a little while, Paolo thought, but they're not going to solve the problem. Finally Paolo settled on a plan. He would go, kick the soccer ball and talk to Lucas for a little bit, and then explain that he didn't need any more friends. He had plenty. Back in Brasilia. Right after lunch Lucas knocked on the kitchen door. As they walked down the dusty road to Lucas's backyard, Paolo realized he was hiding his three-fingered hand against his side. He felt his face getting hot. I shouldn't be embarrassed, he reminded himself. Paolo made a conscious effort to swing his hand normally as he walked. Paolo glanced sideways at Lucas, but Lucas didn't seem to notice either Paolo's worrying or his hand. This is it, Lucas said. He pointed to a goal. Two large tree branches stuck into the ground. A soccer ball sat between the posts. Lucas dribbled the ball and gently kicked it to Paolo. Why did your family move here? Lucas asked as they kicked the ball back and forth. For my parents' jobs. They're aerospace engineers, Paolo explained. Wow, they go into space? Lucas asked. No, they're not astronauts, Paolo said. Ah, oh, Lucas said, his excitement fading. It would be awesome if they were. They get to work with astronauts sometimes, Paolo said quickly. He was annoyed at his urge to impress Lucas. Why did he care what Lucas thought, if he didn't want him as a friend anyway? They work on teams that design spacecraft or parts of other things that fly, like planes. Right now they're working on a parachute that will be a part of a spacecraft, Paolo continued. Like the one you had in your backyard? Lucas asked, popping the ball from one knee to the other. 
kind of Paulo said dot when the rockets land, something has to slow them down, so they don't hit the ground too hard. That's where the parachute comes in. In Brasilia my parents teach a whole course at the university about drag, air resistance, and how things fall through the air or atmospheres on other plants. Well, they did when we lived there. Just then Lucas gave the ball a quick kick, and it flew off to the left. Paulo reached over his head and grabbed the ball with both hands. Oh, Lucas said. He was staring at Paulo's hand, a look of a surprise on his face. Paulo dropped the ball and stood still for a moment, looking at the ground. I've never been to Brasilia, Lucas said. What's it like? Paulo dribbled the ball between his feet a few times before looking up at Lucas. Was he not going to say anything about his hand? The city's great, Paulo said. There are always a lot of people in parks and restaurants. It must be pretty different from here, Lucas continued. Yeah, Paulo said. My best friend, Andre, and I were always out with friends. There was so much to do. Silence hung between them for a few moments. There are things to do here too, Lucas offered. Have you walked around outside of town yet? We could do that this afternoon if you want. I don't know, Paolo said. This is my change, he thought to himself. I should just tell him that I don't need any more friends. Paolo opened his mouth to explain, but a nagging feeling in his stomach stopped him. Mom told me not to be gone too long, Paolo mumbled. I should really get back now. Oh, sure, Lucas said quickly, bouncing the soccer ball from his toe to his knee and back again. It's okay, we can go this weekend. It'll be great. Chapter 4 A Capuaco Mission Paulo managed to avoid Lucas the NXT day in school. Now all he had to do was make it through the trip home. As Paulo walked up his street, he saw Pop sitting on the front step. Mom was there too. No, not Mom. Paulo groaned. Lucas. Oi. Pop called as Paulo walked into the yard. There you are, R. You shouldn't walked home with Lucas. You would have gotten here faster. Yeah, Lucas said. I realized you didn't know the shortcut home, and I wanted to stop by to make sure you made it. I'll walk home with you next week. Shortcut, Paolo muttered as he joined them on the stoop. I didn't see you at school today, Lucas said. Even at lunch. On Monday I'll show you around if you want. Lucas was just telling me about some of the interesting trees nearby, Pop said. I was thinking the two of you could take a trip to get us some Capuacu. If you bring some back I bet I could convince Mom to make some of her famous ice cream. What do you say? Sounds great, Lucas said. Paulo couldn't believe this. No, he was shouting in his head. It's not great, but somehow, yeah, sounds good is what actually came out of his mouth. I should head home, Lucas said, but I'll come get you tomorrow, okay? Paolo watched Lucas walk to the edge of the yard, before turning to Pop. First Julia, now you, Paolo said. Why does everybody want me to hang out with Lucas? It'll do you good to start meeting some kids your own age, Pop said. I don't need to meet anyone, Paolo said. I have plenty of friends already. Fine, Pop said. I'll make you a deal. Go with Lucas to get the Capuacu. If you really don't want to be friends with him after that, I won't make you. You promise you won't say anything about it after that? Paolo asked. Pop nodded. Okay, Paolo said. It's a deal. Chapter 5 Crash Landing Wake up! Pop called as he opened the door of Paolo's room. Time to get moving. Paolo barely cracked one eye open. What time is it? He asked, throwing his arm over his face. Time for exploring. Pop said. Come on. Lucas will be here soon. Okay, okay. Paolo mumbled. He threw off his sheet and swung his feet onto the floor. I didn't realize exploring had to start so early, he muttered. He brushed past Pop and headed into the bathroom. Half an hour later Paolo and Lucas were walking toward the trees on the edge of town. Looking back Paolo saw the tile roofs of all the houses blending together to form red stripes along the edges of the streets. Here we are, Lucas said. 
a kakuaku tree. Huge, waxy leaves as long as Paulo's arms sprouted from the gnarled branches, making a bushy tuft at the top of the tree. The round, cream-colored kakuaku were about the size of Paul's soccer ball. Great, Paulo said. I'll just climb up and grab one. Then we can head back. The bark was rough under Paulo's hands as he pulled himself up the trunk. I think I've got it, Paulo said, stretching his arm toward a melon. As soon as he had a good grip on it, he began to twist and pull down on the fruit. With a snap, Paulo broke the kapuaku off the tree and held it in one hand. Okay, I'm going to drop this down to you. Ready? Ready, Luca said. Paulo gently tossed the fruit toward the spot where Lucas was standing. Who? Lucas called as the fruit flew by, merrily missing him and crashing onto the ground. With a crack the melon broke open, splattering on the ground. Even from up in the tree, Paulo could see dirt and twigs clinging to the fruit. Nice catch, Paulo called. No wonder you stick to soccer. Hey, it's not my fault. You're pelting me with fruit, Lucas said with a laugh. I didn't, though, Paulo. I guess when I dropped it, gravity just took over. Paulo scanned the branches around him and signed as he began scooting down the tree. I don't see any others that I can reach. We'll have to find another tree. You know what we need? Lucas asked. Your parachute. That thing? Paulo scoffed as he reached the ground. It won't work. The capuacu is too heavy. Even with the parachute attached, the fruit would still crash. We could change the parachute, though, Lucas said. If your parents can make a parachute, that stops a spaceship from crashing. We've got to be able to make one for the fruit. What was that you were talking about the other day? Drag. How does that work? Paula wrinkled his brow as he tried to remember some of the things he'd heard Mom and Pop discuss. I think it has to do with the atmosphere. Here on Earth we call our atmosphere air. Even though we can't see air, air is made up of stuff, Paulo said. When something falls through our atmosphere, it pushes away the air in its path. Huh? Lucas asked. I think it's like this, Paulo said. If you wanted to walk quickly down a crowded street, there would be lots of people in your way. You'd bump up against people in the crowd, and they'd bump you back. Lucas nodded. The crowd slows you down. Exactly, Paulo said. When something is falling through the atmosphere, it's kind of like that. The thing that is falling pushes against the air, and the air pushes back. That's called drag. We need to create more drag on the Kapuaku, so that it falls slowly enough to land on the ground without breaking. We'll have to make a parachute that's a lot bigger than the one you had in your yard. We can definitely make this work, Lucas said. Paulo couldn't help smiling a little bit. Lucas never gave up. Paulo had to admit he kind of liked it. Yeah, Paulo said. I guess you're right. Let's go make a parachute. Chapter 6 A Parachute Plan As the boys jogged toward Paulo's house, Paulo remembered something he'd heard Mom and Pop talk about a hundred times at the dinner table. You know, Paulo said, real engineers have to fix and change the technologies they design all the time. Yeah, but they work on important technologies, like spaceships and stuff, Luca said. We're just working on a little parachute. It's still a technology, though, Paulo said. Pop always says that a technology is anything, system, or a process that helps solve a problem. If we design our parachute well, it will help us solve the problem of getting the kapuaku out of the tree without smashing. That will be the hard part, figuring out how to design it so it works, Lucas said. Paulo had a sudden flash. We can use the engineering design process. The what? Lucas asked. It's the way my parents solve problems at work, Paulo said. We can ask Mom and Pop about it when we get home. When the boys reached the yard, the parachute was still on the step, where Paulo had left it. Paulo held up the parachute for Lucas to see. There are really only three parts, he said. The top is the canopy, the suspension lines are in the middle, and the load, or the weight it's carrying, is attached at the bottom. So we need all three parts, Lucas said. But we could change some things about them, like the canopy's material. Or its shape, Paulo said. 
It sounds just like I'm at work, Mom said as she stepped outside. What are you boys up to? Paolo explained their plan to redesign the parachute and gather Capuacu. And I told Lucas about the engineering design process, but I couldn't remember all the steps. That will really be helpful as you're designing, Mom said. First you need to ask questions, like the questions about size, shape, and materials I heard you asking. I asked Paolo a bunch of questions about drag and atmosphere too. Great, said Mom. It sounds like you're almost ready to start the next step. Imagine. You imagine lots of different solutions, then choose one and make a detailed plan. Then you create your parachute, test it, and improve it. So you use all of those steps in your job? Lucas asked. We do, said Mom. We have to do a lot of testing and improving, especially if what we are designing, a parachute or airplane or spacecraft, is going to travel through space or be used on another planet. Every material, part size, and part shape have to be designed carefully. Look over toward the launch pad, Mom said, pointing high above the trees and houses. Paulo could see the huge tower with the green and black flag of Brazil painted on the top. Rising from the launch pad was the craft that Mom and Pop were working on. Why do you think the rocket is cone-shaped on the top? Maybe because the rocket needs to travel really quickly through the air, through our atmosphere, to get into space, Luca said. Exactly, Mom said. With a rocket, we want to create as little drag as possible. But with a parachute, we want a lot of drag, Paulo said. The shape of a parachute is very different. How would you design a parachute that would work on Mars? Lucas asked. You're really starting to sound like an engineer, Mom said. A lot of the time, aerospace engineers have to design technologies that will be used on other planets. But we can't visit other planets to test our designs. Sometimes we can model what it will be like on other planets or use what we know about the two environments to design something that would work on a planet like Mars. Isn't the atmosphere on Mars a lot thinner than our atmosphere? Paulo asked. That's right, Mom said. The thickness of the atmosphere affects the amount of drage. The thinner atmosphere on Mars means there is less drag than here on Earth. So things fall more quickly on Mars than Earth. You'd have to make a much bigger parachute to slow down the fall. But then how would you fit it in the spacecraft? Asked Lucas. Another great question, Mom said. You see, we don't only have to think about how the parachute will work. We also have to think about the strength of the materials that we're using and whether the final design will fit in the space that's available in the rocket. There are many different criteria to consider. Each design is unique to the place where it will be used, and the criteria and goals we have. We have a goal for our parachute too, Luca said, to help us collect some cupuacu. Let's get started, said Paolo. Chapter 7 Parachute Partners Later that afternoon, after brainstorming many different parachute designs, Paolo and Lucas decided on one they thought would work well. They drew a plan and listed the materials they would need. Then they created their parachutes. I have an idea. We can attach this bucket to the parachute to test it, so we don't break another capuacu if it doesn't work, Lucas said. And maybe we need to add some rocks as a test load. Should we get it a try? Yeah, let's see how it works, Paolo said. Lucas stood on a chair on the stoop, held out his arm, and dropped the parachute. The bucket hit the ground with a thud, and the rocks tumbled out. Paolo looked at Lucas and his nose crinkled. The parachute slowed the load down a little bit, but I think we have to do better if we want to make sure the fruit doesn't crack or bruise. Maybe this will make a better canopy, Lucas said, holding up a scrap of a different material. It doesn't have as many little holes in it as the other material. I think this one will create more drag and fall more slowly. I think you're right, Paolo said. Let's redesign it using that material. Lucas untied the old canopy and put the new one in its place. I just have to attach a few suspension lines to it, and then we can test it, said Lucas. His brow wrinkled as he concentrated on type a nut. 
Apollo, can you give me a hand with this? He asked. Um, easier said than done, Apollo said, holding up his three-fingered hand. Lucas looked up, a deep blush spreading from his collar to the top of his forehead. I, um, it's okay, Paolo said, punching him lightly on the shoulder. I'm joking. Give me the string. Lucas smiled. Oh, man, he said. I would have felt awful if you were serious. Don't worry, Paolo said. There really aren't many things that are hard for me to do because of my hand. I'm used to its looking different. You'll get used to it too. The next day Paulo found himself again in the Kapuaku tree, putting a fruit into the bucket tied to their improved parachute. Lucas stood on the ground, looking up into the green leaves of the tree. Okay, Paulo said. Are you ready? Ready. Lucas said. Let it go. Paulo released the parachute. He held his breath as he watched the Kapuaku float down like a leaf in the wind. Finally, with a soft glide, the fruit landed gently on the ground. We did it. Lucas called. Paulo climbed down and then jumped the last few feet from the tree and ran over to inspect the fruit for himself. Good job, Paulo said. Lucas and Paulo slapped hands to congratulate each other. It wasn't until they were walking home that Paulo realized he had used his three-fingered hand. We did it. Paulo called across the yard to Mom, Pop, and Julia. Not one scratch or bruise on it, Lucas said, holding the Kapuaku. A successful mission, Paulo said. This calls for a celebration. Now, if we only knew someone who made really great Kapuaku ice cream, that's my cue, Mom said. I think I can have some ready by dinner time. How does that sound, she asked Paulo and Lucas. Sounds good to me, Paulo said. Hey, you know what we could do till then? Lucas asked. Sometimes on the weekend there are soccer games in the filed by school. Want to go see if anyone's playing? Yeah, Paulo said. Let me grab my stuff. He ran down the hallway to his room, where the last box from the move still held his soccer ball. This time, a big smile spread across Paulo's face as he grabbed the ball and ran outside.